One of the difficult parts of brain cancer is that it's very difficult to image. MRI can look in the brain and see a cancer when an individual patient presents. But then we perturb the system. The cancer is many times surgically removed or radiated or therapy happens. And it starts to be difficult to distinguish between scar tissue and the cancer. And so if you see something in the brain after therapy, is it scar tissue or residual from the therapy I've given, or is it active cancer? So what we need to develop are ways to follow it. I am not going to biopsy a patient every time a change happens in their therapy. So I need a blood surrogate or a biomarker to follow it. So one of the things that proteomics and imaging are trying to do is develop these biomarkers. So biomarker means is that I can have something to follow the disease with. It doesn't have to be part of the disease. It needs to be something that I can follow readily. Because again, I can't biopsy that cancer on a regular basis. So if I'd look at your cancer when you first present, and I could do all these molecular studies, it's telling me something about the cancer today. Well, many times therapy can get that disease under control for years. And if the cancer then recurs, what's going on? Do I have to biopsy that cancer again to know what's going on? Certainly the hope is I can develop these biomarkers to identify what's happening with the cancer and treat it accordingly. And then separate from that is I have to know whether a patient is responding or doing well. And so they're gonna be a different subset of biomarkers. If a patient has a small cancer and I give them a drug and it barely changes, well, are they benefiting because that drug is slowing the disease so it's barely growing? Or is the disease just a slow growing disease that's growing on its own? Well, I need something to help distinguish, and that's where biomarkers come in. An example of a biomarker is PSA, or prostate-specific antigen. And obviously, I'm a prostate doc, so this is something I follow intently. But we all know about PSA is that you follow a marker from the blood. So a tube of blood, I can look and say, if that PSA or that marker is one thing one year, let's say it's one, and then a year later it goes up to four or five, I'm worried because there's been a delta or a change in that marker. I know something happened that I gotta pay attention to. And the thing is, we need that in brain cancer. I know if I have a patient with a PSA of 200 and I give them a drug and the PSA falls to two or three, something good is happening. Therapy seems to be lowering the biomarker and I know what's happening. I don't have to biopsy the patient to know that that cancer has shrunk. The problem in brain cancer is I don't have that. I don't have something to follow except for that MRI, which again, in many cases, is not informative or very difficult to follow an individual patient's disease. You know, brain cancer spreads like a tree. So you've got that initial mass here, and then you've got all the branches. Well, the branches are almost impossible to see on MRI. And I want to know how I'm affecting the cancer as a whole. So we need to develop these technologies for brain cancer. The big question patients ask is how far away from we from developing these technologies for brain cancer? And the answer is we are very, very close. If you look over the last year, several papers have been published in journals such as the New England Journal of Medicine looking at biomarkers that can identify what drug a patient will respond to. Well, that's only going to increase, is that over the next year or two, more and more markers to follow a disease are going to come out. You've seen advances in PET scanning. We can start not just to look if a cancer is present, but to see if it's metabolically active, that if it's turned on. So I can start to distinguish between scar tissue and between uh, uh, active growing cancer. And so these technologies are available and will become more and more available. There's a new kind of MRI test that can actually look at blood flow. And as we get drugs that block blood flow called angiogenesis inhibitors, they're gonna be integral to say, are you benefiting or not? Because I don't wanna give you a therapy that has side effects for three, four, or five months and then do an MRI test to see, did you benefit? I wanna give you something and after a couple weeks, do a test and say, hey, listen, he or she are benefiting, and if not, I can switch therapies. You know, for lack of a better word, wiggle room is something we use in oncology all the time. Is that if a cancer is very small and doesn't have a lot of symptoms associated with it, if a therapy doesn't work, I can go to the next therapy. But many times, I don't have that wiggle room. I don't have the ability to give not my optimal therapy today. And so what these markers will do, again, is guide the right therapy to the right patient now.